Hi folks, I'm back with another video. Hope you're all keeping well out there. And thanks to the one or two people that mentioned my mouse cursor it was not present on the screen. Hope it is there now. So today's video is about PixelFed. And PixelFed is a alternative to something like Instagram. It's basically photo sharing. So those of you that are dissatisfied with Instagram's link up with Facebook, the information Facebook is using about analyzing behavior and selling information to third parties, or that are also not happy with not getting a chronological feed. In other words, it's algorithmically controlled, or it has too many adverts inserted, that sort of thing. Then pixel fed could very well be the thing for you. It works in essence the same way, also from a mobile or from a desktop, or should I say no, not quite, because Instagram doesn't allow you to post from a desktop. With PixelFed, you can actually post from the desktop as well. There are one or two experimental mobile apps at this stage, but generally what I'll show, I will insert a short video clip just to show you what the mobile looks like. It's actually a mobile web app, but it operates and works just like a native application on Android, at least anyway. So maybe before we jump into PixelFed itself, let's just give a bit of perspective. As with a couple of the previous videos, I've covered already things like Hubzilla, Friendica, Mastodon, and Diaspora. PixelFed down here is just an, one more social network within the Fediverse. So this means that you can actually post and share your photos from inside PixelFed whilst people and users on Mastodon or Peertube or GNU Social or wherever else in the Fediverse can actually follow and comment on your photos as well. I'm not 100% sure if the comments are working properly. I seem to remember there might have been a small issue about that, but that is the idea, though, within the Fediverse. You, you're not just locked into one particular walled garden like Facebook only. Other social networks here can actually follow and interact with you and vice versa. And I'll show you what I mean by that when we get into my pixel fed. And I'll show you how you can follow, for example, somebody on Mastodon even. So that's the, the Fediverse and just more the sort of the context behind it. This is the main PixelFed site. So pixelfed.org is the website I'm showing here. And remember also being in the Fediverse, PixelFed can also have a number of nodes or instances installed. You could, for example, host or self-host your own very own instance of PixelFed for family and friends or whatever wide you want to make it and of course they can interact and follow between the different nodes as I've explained in the other videos so you've got a lot of flexibility no walled garden there is a facility if it's not already active there is a facility I see also for exporting all your data and being able to import it somewhere else this just gives an idea of the what the page looks like and as I've already indicated before about adverts pixel fed part of its claim to fame is ad free chronological feeds You've got a few optional filters you can apply to your photos as well when you upload them uh, and afterwards. It's privacy focused, so there's no third party analytics or tracking included. You've got photo albums. So when you do a post, you can post either a single photo or you can post up to 10, I think, depending on the node or the instance actually. But I know in my case, I think it's either 10 or 15 photos at a time. And of course, you can also discover and explore new content. Just amongst the features, and I will show them just now, they've also introduced collections and stories. So stories, I think many people are familiar with on Instagram already. It's something which you post and it disappears in 24 hours. The collections is not on Instagram. So collections will be a collection of related posts. And I'll show that on my profile just now where I've got a collection of different posts relating to technology. If you go there, you can actually see all of them together, which is also quite nice. Right, so it's about creating, sharing, discovering, collecting, following, exploring, and so on. Very much the same. It does have second fact authentication. You can block accounts. You can see connected devices. You've got content warnings. I'll show some of these when we actually look at the posting itself. It's built for the open web. As I said, it's not a walled garden. It is open source. You can join a server. And maybe before we go any further, let me just show you quickly. If you click here on join one, it takes you sort of to a little wizard 
that helps you decide on an instance. So these over here are the various nodes or instances of PixelFed, people that host them, lots of different people. And on the left-hand side here, you can click and say, show me the ones that are open registration only, but are running the latest version. And whether you want video uploads, uh, do they have a photo limit as to how many you can upload at a time? And also a minimum upload in terms of size-wise. And you can apply a filter over there and it'll bring back those sites that you, you know, that you can consider. I've got my hosting on pixelfed.social. And you'll see at the moment they've got 15,000 users. So in total for, for PixelFed across all the instances, 26,000 users, 196,000 posts, and 88 different instances. So it, it is very much like when Instagram first started out. It was very clean, advert-free. Everything was in chronological order. People actually enjoyed using it and it grew quickly. And then, of course, everything else happened and it evolved and it's not exactly what it was before. So if you are sort of hunkering after what it was before, Pixel Fed is maybe something you want to give some serious consideration to. So I think let's go and have a look then at, at my page. You'll see there's my profile name. This is the feed that you see. Some of these are mine. The photos here that I've posted already. I was busy today. You'll also see, if you see little dots like this underneath here, it means you can slide the picture left or right to see additional photos. You've also got another view here where you can view it as sort of a more icon view. What is nice with this view is it does pop up also the name and the description briefly of the, of the photo. So this feed that you're seeing at the moment is my home feed. So in here, I'm seeing my own posts and I'm seeing just the people that I'm following. If I unfollow a person, they won't appear in this particular view. So again, very, very clean. So you can take something like, say, this post. And if you open it, you can like it over there if you want to. Oh, this is a video post, actually. You can like it, you can adjust volume, full screen. There's a couple of controls. You can download it or have picture in a picture. You can comment over there by typing and ticking post. You've got a full screen view. You've got a bookmark and you can also reshare the person's post. Normally on the top right of the post over here, you can also click there to embed it, to, to get code to embed it somewhere else. You can report the person you can mute the particular profile, then you'll still be following them, and you can block the profile. So you've got a couple of controls there. Let's go back to the home feed. So this is somebody's post. I see there's a couple of different options in this view. So here you've still got reports. You can unfollow, you can go to the actual post, you can embed, you can copy the link, or you can just cancel the action. I think it's because I was standing maybe on the home page. If I go into the post, the other thing I can just point out here while it's still present, and that's why I wanted to do the video now, is this is somebody's story. So what happens is the stories will appear over here at the top of your feed. If you see this, it means there's a, a disappearing story. So if you click on the story, it'll pop up. You'll see it'll run through its bit of time, and it disappears again. I think if there were five or six stories here, it would just run to them one after the other. So that's just to give you an idea of how stories actually work. You can have a look at the profile. So I've gone to settings at the moment. You'll see here's my account settings. You've got a bio, a website, name, language, and it tells you how much storage you've used. On this particular instance, I've got a maximum of five gigabytes that I can use. I'm not sure what happens when you get to five gigabytes because I'm not sure that this one even offers an option for paying. I haven't got there yet. I'll have to do another video if I get there. Then you've got on accessibility, you can reduce motion, you can set high contrast mode or disable the video autoplay. Email is where you're going to go set your email address. You've got a couple of adjustments or you should have for notifications. I see they haven't got settings yet for notifications. There's a place to change your password. And then on privacy, you can make it a private account. You can opt out of search engine re-indexing as well if you want to. You can have your follower count showed or show your following count as well on your profile if you want to. 
you've got relationships here. These are the people that, these are my followers at the moment. Uh, this is just this last week in essence, because I started actually up about a week ago. You can block them or mute them. You can see who you are following and unfollow them. And then you've also got a couple of hashtags that you can follow. So that'll also mean that items that have got this hashtag will appear also in my feed. Then if there's any reports that you've made about users, you'll be able to see it there. Under security, okay, I'm gonna to have to put my password in. That's where you're gonna set your two-factor authentication. Why it's not enabled was I was busy testing an alpha version app on Android and it, that app didn't yet cater for two-factor authentication. So I should actually re-enable this again, which I will do. Then you've got data export. You can export your following followers, statuses, mute block list and your account. And for developers, this is where you'd be creating uh, OAuth authentication. And then there's a couple of lab settings here which are experimental. Just be careful here because I had this ticked on use Moment UI for posts on your on, and your profile. And what happened was it wasn't displaying my collection. So, you know, bearing that in mind, there is the dark mode. I've got the dark mode activated at the moment. I've got use read more. So what it's doing is it's not showing me the full long text. You've got up to 2000 characters you can post for a post. This will leave a little thing to click there to say read more. There's a simple mode for timeline only. I've got announcements on and I've got the Metro layout forced on. That is really the settings. We can just look at the discovery mode quickly. So discovery gives you a couple of tags at the top that you can click on to filter the view below. And it's got a couple of suggested places as well. There's a lot more than this. It's just the suggested ones they've given. What it then shows you is a portion here for trending. These are trending daily at the moment. So these are new posts in the last day that are trending. You can click into any one of them, like them, follow, that sort of thing. It's got a couple of categories here you could tick on as well. And then what it's got is based on things that I've liked and people I'm following and tags and that sort of thing. It's giving me personalized suggestions here for people I may want to follow. Yes. So that's basically the ones that I've got at the moment. I shouldn't have any notifications at the moment. Oh, I've got a couple of notifications. Yes, yeah, sorry, it's previous notifications. On this menu on the top right, You've got options really for the new post, which I'll finish off with. The home feed I've already shown. There's a public feed, which is all the posts that have been posted in chronological order on your local instance. So this is on pixelfed.social. I'll be seeing all the other people on pixelfed.social. This is immaterial of what I've liked or followed or anything like that. So I'll get a feeling for who else has been posting on this instance. Oh, it does have facility to hide things that are not work friendly or nudity or that type of thing. So you'd have to click there to show it. Let me rather not click there because I don't know what that is at the moment. And then, as I said before, if you're looking at somebody's post, you have got the options to comment and so on and report this person I'm not following. So I could follow them from here as well if I wanted to, or I could go to their post. So the other views you've got here are stories, which I've already shown on the home feed. My profile, notifications, we've done settings already. So let's have a look at my profile before we just finish off really with posting. On my profile, and you can give these addresses out as a public address, a person only needs to register if they want to follow somebody or comment or like. Anybody is able to with a public link, view a photo or profile. So very, very nice for resharing of your photos from here to other networks or social media. So you've obviously seen, this got a summary of some of my posts here, my most recent posts. I've also saved some posts over there and I've got here collections. We are on posts at the moment. 
This is a set above here. You set in your settings already. And there's where you're going to copy your link to reshare it. There's also, interesting enough, an Atom feed or an RSS feed. So if you were to give that link out or use that link from anybody's profile, if you've got an RSS reader, it's going to show you whenever somebody has posted a photo or a post, which is a very nice way of keeping track of things without having to visit the site all the time if, you know, if that's what you want to do. So collections is something that is fairly unique. If you click on collections, you'll see I've got three collections. So there is a little bit of a problem here with collections. One thing it's not showing is the description of the collections. So one way around that is maybe put a photo or a post on with the name of a collection. In other words, this is Tech and Gadgets, Ham Radio over here. And this one is Places to See in Cape Town. That's one idea maybe at the moment to get around that little, little issue. Uh, or you've got to use a very sort of descriptive um, type of post or photo. So remember, this is not a collection of photos. It's a collection of posts. So this one for Cape Town, if I click on it, you'll see here it's got the description of the collection. It's got a summary about the collection. And I've got, I don't have hashtags in this one. It basically says there's three photos. I think these were actually individual photos. So it's not going to show you too much. But again, you could click. This is also the place within the collection if you want to add new photos. It'll show you some of your existing photos. You can click or you can add a URL as well to it and it'll include it in the collection. You can edit the description over here. For example, that short stay is not actually correct there. It's, there we go. You can also make a collection, of course, public or followers only. So there's that option. Or you can delete your collection over here. Let me just go back to profile collections. I think I've got some multi-user photos, maybe under ham radio. So I'm not sure which one of these is a multi-photo. Let me just have a look back. Collections. Tech and gadgets must have multiple photos. Ah, this one I know has got a multiple photo. So this particular one, now I don't see if there's any sort of indication on here for it, but if you click on it, You'll see it actually opens up the post. There's the post description and everything with its hashtags. And you'll see there you can go to more. You can drag to go to more photos. There's the indicator at the bottom showing you how many. Whenever you do open somebody's post, it also does give you a summary below of, of additional photos from that particular user. So you can also get a good idea if you want to actually follow that user or not. This is obviously my own one, but if it was somebody else's, you could click over there and say follow. Also, if you click on the location that I've set or whoever anybody set, it'll also filter. If you click on that, it's going to take you to all Cape Town based photos. I'm the only one posting in Cape Town at the moment. So you see there it brings up Cape Town, but it could have been Paris, France or uh, London, England, you know, for, for any other re reason. So I think we've covered really everything. The only other thing really then to show just is a new post. So you've got three types of post. The one is just a post with a single photo or with up to 10 photos or videos. That's a normal post. The other is a story. As I said, that's going to be a disappearing story and it'll appear like that at the top of the feed. And the other one will be to make a new collection where you will create a post that's going to be part of that collection. And then from there afterwards, you can add other posts to that collection if you want to or while you're actually busy editing it. So I think for the example, let's go and have a look at new post. So there you'll see I've got three photos at the moment in this folder that I'm going to upload as part of this post. The first one is going to likely be the picture that people are going to see in the post. So I think I will use, I'll use that one maybe just to set the scene, I suppose. Let's open that. And there's the photo. These are the filters at the bottom that you can apply. I don't think that these filters are working outside of pixel fed. I think the filters are an overlay that are applied within the pixel fed social network itself. But that's where you'd set them. So you could just go, you could choose the filter. You can crop and resize if you want to up here. And you could go to next. This is where you're going to tick on whether it's got nudity or I don't know what, what is SFW. I can't even remember. But anyway, I know it's nudity and something, something, something. 
You can tag other people as well here in your post. You can add a location. So in this case, I'm going to say Cape Town, South Africa. You've got an audience here, so you can make this public, unlisted, or followers only. And then you've got some advanced settings here. You can turn off commenting if you want to and media descriptions for the visually impaired. So I will say photo of front of a pub. And I've prepared some text already, so I'm just going to paste it in here. But in essence, that will be the text that's going to appear with this post. Oh, and you know what I've forgotten is to add the other two photos. So let me just go. You'll see there it says one at the moment. Let me just go back. Up here is the plus to add another photo. That will be the second one. And add the third one. Um, so for each one, depending on the photo you're standing on, I'm now on the second photo. If I can just, here we go. Again, you can crop, edit it, or delete it from the from the group as well, and apply an individual filter to each one. So I've got my description in there ready. This has been mentioned already, but this box doesn't seem to be resizing. You'll see it, it does give us the character count, 288 out of 2,000 over there, but you can't resize this box at the moment, which is a little bit irritating for many people. Okay, I've already filled everything else in, so I'm just going to basically post it. Off it goes. What I can now do, okay, this is the post itself. So now you can see there's the three dots showing with these additional photos. Here's my description. And what I can do is I can go to my profile and I can add it to that collection for Cape Town as additional places to go see and so on. So I'm going to say, add i know it says photo but it actually is a post i think that creates a bit of confusion so you'll see now that cape town collection has now got this added to it as well i think collections are great because i i like having themes around things like places technology environment and whatever else you know just to help does give a little bit of additional information what i can also just show briefly is i forgot to mention I did mention at least that you could follow people from other networks and so on. So look at this. We're in pixel fed at the moment. If I put my address in at the top here, that is my Mastodon, which is like a, a Twitter alternative, which I've done a video on already. This is a completely different social network in the Fediverse, which I've got an account on over there. So if I hit enter in the search box, it actually brings up and it shows my profile at mastodon.social. I could view this, the profile here. We're still within PixelFed. And I could follow the person from here. And that's actually quite an interesting option to have. I mean, what other social network? Imagine if you were sitting inside Facebook and you could follow somebody on Twitter. Or if you were in Twitter and you could follow somebody in Instagram. Why not? I mean, that is what the internet was all about. My big problem I've got at the moment is that too many of those social networks are literally creating closed wall gardens around themselves. And the whole idea of the internet was, is why can't I belong on the social network that I enjoy the most? If Pixel Fed's the place I want to be, let me be there, but let me be followed by everybody else and let me follow them as well. So that is something that the Fediverse does actually offer you. So this is just a quick view of the mobile view that you see on the phone. It actually is running inside a web browser. You can see if you look at the little icon over there, it's the Brave browser on my phone. I've just saved that home page as an icon, so it's like a quick link. If I click on this now, it'll open it up in the browser at the scene. And you can see there, there's the story we saw a little bit earlier at the top. There's the post that I just did. And if you swipe right, there's the pictures. So it's pretty well much the same. At the bottom are the icons. You can see the icons along the bottom. The left is for the home screen. Searches down over there. You've got likes, and I think that was profile, isn't it? 
Yeah, that's your profile. And if you click on the middle one, that's going to bring up the same screen you saw earlier on for new posts and so on. In this case, it's going to choose from your camera or from your gallery files, you know, your photo files that you saved already. So pretty well much works pretty well much the same. It's nice and responsive. The mobile work view really does work well. The top menu, you've got the usual options there as well. So you can go to discover and to do whatever else you need to do on mobile. So it works just as well on mobile. You don't actually need to install an actual application. As I said, there are one or two that are an alpha uh, version at the moment, but not necessarily to use at all. The only thing you might be missing is you're not going to get push notifications if there's anything that comes through. That's the, the only difference. You know, in summary, that's really pixel fed then in a nutshell. And this video wasn't nearly as long as the other ones. So I hope everybody's happy with it being short and sweet, but Hopefully it has give, just given an idea of, you know, what you can use PixelFed for and the fact that it can be an alternative to Instagram. I think the only limiting factor possibly is they do rate limit. I can't remember how many it is, something like 100 likes per hour. And I forget how many posts per hour or so. It's just to stop people spamming and going overboard. So there is a rate limiter. And the only other thing that I've mentioned is really is that five gigabit limit on this particular uh, node or instance of PixelFed. So that can also be changed. If, if there's another node that's offering, you know, 100 gigs worth of storage, well, great, then you've got 100 gigs worth. Or you can host it yourself for your family, say, and have 100 gigs worth for your whole family if you wanted to. So there is actually quite a few. There is quite a few. I don't think it's a major limiting factor. I think there are alternatives and there are options there. But I do like the network. And for me, you know what? It is like the old Instagram. And I'm going to probably be posting uh, permanently from here in future. So I'll post links below this video then to this instance, to the PixelFed main website, as well as to my profile. If you are on there, you can follow me and interact with me. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and stay safe and I'll see you in my next video.